Hello everyone, here's another Physics 30 example. Uh, this time we're in Unit 5, which is Atomic Theory, and this uh, Lesson 2 here is the Photoelectric Effect. So just to recap, uh, in the Photoelectric Effect we have a light source um, that we can vary the wavelength of, and that light source is incident on uh, a pure polished metal, in this case we have sodium. The electrons in the metal are liberated by the energy of the photons and they're able to move across um, a vacuum. So there's no gas in here, there's nothing to stop them moving or to interact with them. They're able to move across a gas, uh, sorry, move across a vacuum and complete a circuit. And we can measure this circuit in terms of current. So we could, this, this here would be a an ammeter, this would measure how much current there would be moving through this circuit. And then over here, we would later on talk about applying a voltage, which we could vary, that would then stop these electrons from moving. But this first example is just saying, it's just asking qualitatively, if the threshold frequency, in other words, the wavelength or the energy of this light um, for a metal is blue light. Okay, so we're in the blue, which is what we have here. Then describe the nature of the photocurrent. Photocurrent is referring to the current, the movement of the electrons as a direct result of the photoelectric effect. Uh, so we're going to describe that photocurrent. In other words, we're going to say that there's no current or a low current or a high current. If this incident light is number one, or is A, a dim violet, in other words, it's a violet in color, which means the individual photons would have a high energy, but it's dim. And when we say dim, what we're really meaning is that there is a low number of photons per um, unit of time. Um, we, we often call this intensity um, or the number of photons per surface area or whatever it is but it's really a number of photons so when the light is dim there just aren't many photons there's still a high energy so in this first example in, in a they're still of high energy because they're violet so they're still going to be emitting electrons but there's just not many of them so what would we say about that um, that situation well, we would say that there, there would be photons. We don't really care about the speed or the energy of those photons. What we do care is whether or not there is a current, a low current, or a high current. Well, yes, there's a current, but because it's dim, there's not many photons, that means there's not gonna be many electrons. So we're gonna say there is a low current for, for this first situation. Second situation, is bright orange. Well, bright orange means that there's the light is is very intense, which means there's an increased number of photons. And we could say per unit of time or per surface area, whatever we want to say, but just a lot of photons, which means there's going to be if well it means it means first of all if this light is able to liberate the electrons then there would be a high current. However, what we should know is that when we change the energy of the photon, as we come down into the lower energies, most metals, um, in fact, all of them, all of the pure metals, will not have their electrons liberated if the energy is below the blue-green. So orange, well, orange is way down here. That is not going to be enough energy for most metals that we talk about to liberate an electron. So even though there's lots of photons, there are going to be no photoelectrons emitted. In other words, there's going to be no current. Okay, and that's really important. Okay, so for the second example, we are told that the minimum, minimum energy uh, to emit an electron from a material is 3.55 EVs, and we're asked to determine the maximum wavelength of the EMR required uh, in nanometers. Well, I've set up this um, 
image here to show us what's going to be happening here. So there's our 3.55. I can I can get it to 55. So 3.54, 3.54 electron volts incident on a metal, which gives us these electrons. In other words, this is the threshold frequency. So if we were to lower this just ever so slightly, these electrons would stop being emitted from the photoelectric apparatus. And this is, remember, this is with zero voltage. We are not applying a voltage. We're completely ignoring this for this question. So no voltage, just looking at the current and playing around with this, uh, the energy of the incident photons. So what we should remember is that when we're dealing with, um, this is essentially a, a conservation of energy. We've got energy coming in, energy coming out. And in our photoelectric experiment, one of the assumptions in the model is that the energy coming in is going to be the incident photon. Let's call it HC over lambda incident, the incident photon. And that's then equal to the energy required to liberate the electrons plus whatever energy those electrons have. Well, in the in this example, we've got the we've got this energy dialed in to the exact amount required to just release these electrons. So we're sort of assuming that the electrons have no, no energy, but they are liberated. And that means we can say that the energy that comes out of this is going to be exactly equal to the work function. In other words, the energy, the liberation energy of the metal. And we know that the work function is equal to H F naught and we can also rewrite that as H C over lambda naught. So um, using the values that we have, well we're already, we're already given the energy of the metal, uh, the energy of the, the incident photons, so we can say 3.55 electron volts, that's my initial energy, the energy coming from these photons is equal to HC over the um, over the threshold wavelength. So the threshold wavelength is going to be HC over three decimal five five EVs. And of course, what we want to do because we're in EVs, we want to use our Planck's constant of four decimal one four times ten to the negative. 15. Oops, I've done that. done that wrong. Let's get rid of that. Let's go uh, to the negative 15. And because, of course, that's in EV seconds, multiplied it by the speed of light. I'm running out of space here over this 3.55 EVs. And that's going to give us, if you plug that in, that's going to give us, oops, having trouble writing. It's going to give us the threshold wavelength to be three decimal four nine eight five lots of other decimal places times ten to the negative seven now we need the answer in nanometers which is to the negative nine so i'm going to move this decimal place two more along to get it to the negative nine so uh, and then i'm going to round up so three five zero that's three decimal places uh, sorry three significant digits which is what we want from our question and that's going to be to the negative 9, which is nanometers. So 350 nanometers. And that matches, if we were to, if we were to notice on our, on our apparatus here, we're halfway between 300 and 400 to get this energy. And so that's our 350 right there. OK, for, so for our last example, uh, we have the most complex uh, scenario because this involves um, some additional pieces of our uh, conservation of energy formula. So let's go ahead and state that right away. So we're going to say that energy initial is equal to the energy final. And so what's the energy initial? Well, that's coming from these photons coming in from our photoelectric um, apparatus. So we're going to say, um, we're going to say the energy of the photon. Okay. And that's going to be equal to, well, in this case, we are going to have um, a work function that's pretty high, actually, more, uh, 
definitely higher than what I'm going to have on this in this picture. Um, but that also means that the EMR shone onto the metal is going to be of really high energy as well. What's happened here is that the or what's implied in the question is that the light, the energy of the photons has exceeded the work function. In other words, we're going to add this on. So the energy of this instant photon is going to be greater than the work function. So that means there has to be some other energy uh, included in our conservation of energy formula. And it's going to be the maximum speed of the photoelectrons. These photoelectrons are going to have a kinetic energy. And that's what we're looking for, the EK max. Okay, so what we can do is we can think about our, um, our equation and start adding some stuff in or thinking about what we have. The energy of the photon we know because we're given the frequency of the incident EMR. So let's put that in. I'm going to say it's HF incident. Okay, I also know the work function that's given. And then, of course, the EK is going to be a half M v squared. Okay, um, now in the photoelectric experiment, it's probably worth mentioning, um, in the photoelectric experiment, what Millikan did was he took this experiment and added a component to it. He added a voltage that would stop these electrons. So essentially he would balance the energy of the electron with the electrical energy of the system. Um, we, we should be talking about that in class quite a bit. In other words, he was saying that if he was able to apply a voltage here, the the VQ, the electrical energy, was going to be equal to that if he could if he could stop this motion. So the V would be zero. The velocity of this would be zero. He could then say that this electrical energy was equal to the EK. So we can often say that VQ is equal to one half mv squared. That's not what we're looking for in this question. What we are looking for is this velocity. Determine the maximum speed of these photoelectrons. And we know this value, we know this value. The one thing that's a bit of a sticking point and one thing that might trip us up is the type of energy used. We know that um, if we're using uh, meters per second, then we need our, let's bring this over here, we need this to be joules. Because joules is a derived unit of kilogram meters squared second squared. So we have to be in joules if we're going to be talking about meters per second. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing. So let's convert this 7.20 EV into joules. Okay, I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to cancel out the EVs. I'm going to get my joules on top. Well, I know that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is equivalent to 1 EV. So that's giving me an energy of 1.152 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. That's what I'm going to use for my, my, um, for my energy here. The energy of the work function. So that's my work function. So coming back over to our equation here, let's go ahead and solve for V. So we know that HF of the incident light um, minus the work function, which is a given value, um, uh, we're going to have to multiply by 2, we're going to have to divide by the mass of the electron, and then we're going to have to square root the whole thing. That's going to be equal to my velocity. Oops. So that's going to give me my velocity here. Let's put these numbers in. So I'm going to say that the velocity of this electron is 2 times. Now I want my Planck's constant to be 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 in joule seconds. Multiply by the frequency, which is 4 times 10 to the 15 hertz. And then that whole thing combined minus, um, let's see, my work function, 
which is in joules, 1.152 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And actually, it's going to be that whole thing times 2, so I need to just move my, get rid of this 2 for a second, and just check my brackets. So I've got that minus that. Yeah, so I need another bracket around there. Let's use a square bracket. I think I can do this. Yep, I'm going to go square bracket just so that it's really clear. Square bracket here, square bracket around there. This whole thing times 2. Uh, just keeping my order of operations here. And then this whole thing divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And now I can square root the whole thing. Wow, big equation. Gives me, if I plug this into my calculator, should give me 1.81. And that's my, two, my three significant digits times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that's the maximum velocity of this electron. I'm pretty happy with that. This is way below my 10% the speed of light threshold. Um, if I start getting above that threshold, then I have to think about relativistic effects, which we want to avoid. So that's good for me. And that's the maximum speed of these photoelectrons.